following is a production of the Department of Broadcasting and Journalism at Western Illinois University. One of Macomb High's most beloved coaches is hanging up his whistle. Hear from now former MHS head football coach Kelly Sears as he moves into retirement from coaching. And the Bomber boys basketball team is on a roll. Find out if they kept it up on Saturday in the hangar at MHS. And tonight is one of the most important and highly anticipated games inside Western Hall in recent memory. WIU women's basketball tangles with South Dakota State with first place in the Summit League on the line. Player interviews and expert analysis coming up later on the spring semester premiere of Local Sports Focus. And welcome to Local Sports Focus, a show that covers everything Western Illinois and Macomb High School Athletics. I'm Danny Fry. And I'm Jason Chauvin. On today's show, we have news and notes from around my, my, Macomb High School Athletics, including girls' regional basketball action. But first, the Macomb High boys basketball team is starting to click on all cylinders, and they went for four wins in five tries on Saturday night, hosting Mercer County Bombers and the Golden Eagles getting ready to go from the hangar. Right out of the gate, a quick start for the Bombers, and Xavier Campbell nails a three from straight away. These two teams would go back and forth in the beginning. Beautiful step through right here and finish for Rashawn King, and he's only a freshman. What a beautiful play. Mercer County would be on the break right here, right now. Good kick to the corner. Quinton King is wide open for three, and he wouldn't miss. Two-point lead for the Golden Eagles. But the Bombers would say, hey, right back at you here on the break. Ben Higgins is open on the wing, and he splashes home a triple. Bombers led by five after a quarter. Jason Mercer County would hang in there, though. Look at this pass to a cutting Ben Nichols, a sweet dime by the Golden Eagles' Jordan Metcalf. The Bombers would turn it on from there. In the second half, good ball movement. There's Higgins again, drilling another triple, and the Bombers would turn defense into offense. There's the SWAT. Pass up the floor to the Macomb High running back, Kayvon Johnson to the rim. Held the basket and the foul. What a play, and the Bombers would run away with it, Jason. 66-47 win over the Golden Eagles as four Bombers scored in double figures in this one. The Leathernecks men's basketball team is in the thick of qualifying for the Summit League tournament after missing the event last year. A crucial test faced Billy Wright's team on Valentine's Day when the Denver Pioneers visited Western Hall. How about Western keeping the ball? How about Western here keeping the ball alive and it results in no. A here's here's a jumper from the mid-range area there. Then Denver led 49 to 27 at the break, and then 16-25 left in the second half. Garrett Covington baseline runner. Denver had comfortably at that point 54 to 35. Daniel Amigo big game 24 points, 14 rebounds. He muscles his way in for two. The Leathernecks on the fast break. Jeremiah Usiosophy count it and one. C.J. Duff in side for a quick two and how about Western keeping the ball alive it results in a Covington three and we got ourselves a ball game Jason 56 50 pioneers halfway through in the second half before Mike McClusack lights it up from deep it's a one possession game here reverse layup on the other side by Jake Pemberton plus the foul and Denver hangs on with plays like this from Thomas Neff as the WIU rally comes up just short in this one. The Leathernecks drop in this one, falling 78-72, the final inside of Western Hall. The Leathernecks head to Fargo on Saturday against the top-ranked team in the Summit League, North Dakota State. To Macomb High girls basketball, the Lady Bombers trying to keep their season alive in this win-or-go-home mode in the IHSA Class 3A Peoria Regional on Monday night. A good limestone squad stood in the way, though. We take you to the Lions Den in Peoria. The Lady Bombers trying to keep their season alive. 
The Rockets, though, stood in their way from Limestone. The game was sloppy in the beginning. First field goal didn't come until the runner off glass by Denasia Stuckey in the lane, making it 2-1 Limestone two and a half minutes into the game. And then a nice baseline saved Allison Westerdahl for two. And Coach Keene trying to make something happen on offense. And to the second quarter, a nice steal there for Westerdahl. She goes to the other end and lays it in for two. Heading up, heads up defense though here by the Bombers leads to a transition layup for Erica Dawson early in the second quarter. Limestone ahead 12 to 5 early on. Now a quick inbound pass to Zoe Wall who buries the corner three right there for the Bombers. Though the Rockets would be on a run and they're not taking their foot off the gas pedal in the second quarter. Lena Driscoll with the touch on the floater, the lone senior. Courtney Thorman here knocking down a jumper. Limestone led 25 to 8 at half. To the third quarter we go. Jordan Hare lays it in off the inbound. What a beautiful play. And back to Hare for the hoop here and the harm with the Bombers showing some, showing some fight now. But ultimately, MHS couldn't stop threats like Kennedy Jackson inside. And the Rockets were just too much to handle. Limestone ends the Lady Bombers basketball season 55 to 26 MHS. Finishes the 2016-17 campaign with an 8-20 overall record. Let's go back in time a little bit to February 8th. A week ago, it was playoff time for Bushnell Prairie City Girls Basketball, hosting Abingdon Avon in a Class 1A regional semifinal. We take you to a nice little quaint gym there in Bushnell. The Lady Spartans getting ready to go against the Tornadoes. BPC getting right to work. Abby Pendarvis there for the second chance bucket off glass, picking up her teammate. But it'd be a big night for the Tornadoes and Madison Jones. Here she is on the break going right to the 10 and lays it in for Abingdon Avon. Then time winding down in the first, Jones behind the back with a dribble and then Drano on the three to beat the buzzer. Tornadoes had a 11 to five lead after one. Bushnell wouldn't go away though in the second quarter off the inbound. Emma Bradford works hard. She cleans up her own miss and scores off the glass. Bushnell trail 23-12 at half. In the third quarter, the Spartans on the attack. Savannah Servin from the wing scores the three ball. Spartans are trying to climb back in this ball game. But Madison Jones came to play in the second half as well. Goes behind the back with the dribble and banks the shot in, plus the foul. What a play by Jones. She was absolutely lights out in the end here, finding herself wide open for three. Nothing but net for the senior. She would have 19 points in the game. Congrats to the Lady Spartans on a fine season. Final score, 47-40 Tornadoes. A day later, Princeville defeated Abingdon Avon, 63-43 to advance to sectionals. Local Sports Focus is just getting started. Still to come, a recap of WIU football's recent signing day class as head coach Charlie Fisher is reloading, not rebuilding. And coming up, we have a preview of the WIU women's basketball team as they're on a collision course with South Dakota State for sole possession of first place. All that coming up right, right after the break. Such a great camaraderie. All the opportunities that I've been given here have just been amazing to expand on that resume. I try not to beat myself up on the mistakes I make because there's so many opportunities. Just giving that experience, and this is how I got to do things in the real world, is really what the broadcasting and journalism department has done for me. When you have a really good show and that everybody nailed it, I mean, that's one of the best feelings in the world. nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Garrett Covington chose Western Illinois University because of the law enforcement program and the chance to be a leatherneck. Western has one of the best law enforcement programs in the nation, and I get to play the game I love. 
whether I go pro or I go to law school. Because of Western, I would take my success to another level. I am a success story. I am a leatherneck. Think purple, think success. Think Western Illinois University. Welcome back to Local Sports Focus. National Signing Day is the biggest day of the offseason for college football programs, and that's no different for Western Illinois Leathernecks as head football coach Charlie Fisher recapped what's being called a successful recruitment day. National Signing Day is a time for college football programs across the nation to replenish their crop of players after losing seniors who have moved on to the next level. WIU head football coach Charlie Fisher addressed the media after the extensive recruitment process. And their families, but this day never gets old for me, ever. I know you hear this all the time, but it's the truth. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun day. You wake up with a little extra bounce in your step, a lot of excitement because of all the hard work that goes in to getting to this point. Seeing whether or not there are certain things Fisher looks for in the recruitment process, he says there's one trait that sticks out in particular. Here's a stat that I know everybody will like. I've said all along, you got to recruit smart guys, tough guys, guys that love football. Ten of our 19 high school recruits have above a 3-0. That's important to me. And uh, when we look at the total body of work, if you get guys that want to excel off the field, and then that generally is a transition over to on the field. With a full year under his belt at WIU, Fisher says the process was a lot easier than last year when he only had three weeks to recruit. I've been around a lot of guys that know what that looks like, and, and I've learned a lot over the years. So that really never bothered me right from the get-go because I've done it all my life. But just you know, kind of getting a handle on where the players are, certainly getting to know the Midwest, the, the high schools, the coaches, all that, so much easier this time around, absolutely. Overall, the Leathernecks added 24 recruits from 11 different states. Coach Fisher is sure to have his team ready as spring practice is just over a month away. The Western Illinois softball season, it's not a month away, it's here. It began this past weekend near Chicago in Rosemont at the Total Control Sports Inventational. The Leathernecks won two out of their first five games, including a comeback 7-6 win over Butler on Saturday. Sitting at 2-3 and three overall, WIU heads to the Holiday Inn Hilltopper Classic this weekend, hosted by Western Kentucky. The Leathernecks take on Miami of Ohio on Saturday at 10 a.m. to kick off the tournament. The Western Illinois women's basketball team returns home after a two-game road trip to face possibly their toughest test of the season. I was able to catch up with head coach J.D. Gravina and key players looking forward to tonight's matchup. Head coach J.D. Gravina is in his sixth season here at WIU, and tonight he's expecting one of the biggest crowds inside of Western Hall. Gravina calls this one of the biggest games for WIU as the Leathernecks take on South Dakota State for sole possession of first place. Well, there hasn't been probably a bigger game for women's basketball in Western Hall for over a decade. Maybe the WBI game last year in the postseason, but you know, you've got the top two teams in the league battling it out for first place and a team that we've had a hard time with. You know, we've lost the last 19 in a row to them, so we'll need a big crowd to hopefully get us over the edge. Last time out, the Jackrabbits bested the Leathernecks, but Coach Gravina and the players know what the team has to focus on to come away with the victory. Um, we have to shoot it better. We did not shoot it well against them. They're such a good team defensively. You have to take advantage when you do get an open shot. And then we've got to make sure we're scoring in transition. That's kind of our strength. Once they get their half-court defense set, they're in pretty good shape. We just have to keep playing like how we've been playing. Like, I mean, we've won our last five games. Four have been on the road. And like, I feel like to come home and like have our fans behind us, where like we, they haven't been since we've been on the road. And I think having our fans come and like give us that energy and like want to play well for them. We can't let the first couple shots, whether we miss or make those, dictate the rest of the game and our energy throughout the game. Um, just the way, we, we, the way we've been playing, we can't look at it as um, a huge opportunity. You know, we just need to play the way we've been playing and not try to overthink it or try to do too much individually. When we come back, a special guest who knows the WIU women's basketball program better than most. She's in here for a preview of the Summit League first place showdown tonight. Find out who it is and don't go anywhere. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. 
only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. I think what I love most about News 3 is that we're really provided with a real-world experience. We're able to get hands-on work in news, and it's very similar to what you would find in a real newsroom. But everyone around here is really good about pushing you to be your best. News 3 has really taught me to believe in myself and that if you work hard, you can achieve anything you want. News can sometimes be really tricky, and you have a lot of roadblocks. All of us hold each other to really high standards, and I think that really shows in our newscast. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Local Sports Focus. Danny Fry back with you and glad to have Tori Neiman here with me. She's the assistant, F, assistant director of Athletic Academic Services. Surprised I got that off the top of my head. In fact, we couldn't even fit it on, on your little graphic. That's such a long title. But Tori, thanks for coming on. Uh, Tori also joins me on the Leatherneck Sports Network as the WIU Women's Basketball Radio Analyst. Tori, thanks for coming in to talk about Western Illinois Women's Basketball. Thank you for having me this morning. And we'll start uh, with your basketball journey, I mean, uh, star player at, at, and Cannon back in Missouri, played for associate head coach at Western Illinois right now, Seth Minner, committed to Mizzou, and then somehow you, you find your way back to Western Illinois. I played two years at Mizzou, transferred, and then came here. I had to sit out a year and then got to play two seasons with Coach Minner and Coach Gravina, and best decision I made. Uh, what kind of stands out in, in, your, in your two years? Or obviously, women's basketball here at Western Illinois is a very close knit group. What kind of stands out in the, your memory, your playing career? It was a lot of fun and just kind of being in the trenches of really turning a program around. I joined a few years after Coach Gravina and Coach Minner took over, and you know we kind of had a 500 season, then we won a couple more games above 500 my senior year. And just to be a part of the process of, you know, demanding excellence, we're going to be better. And now they're in the position to fight for a title, and it's just awesome to witness that. Your honorable mention a couple times as well in the Summit League, and it just seemed like it really gelled well uh, with your teammates. Of course, Ashley Luke on the team at the time, but you also have seen and played with some of the leaders now on this team. That has to be cool. cool it's so awesome. You know, I got to play with Mallory Boyle for two seasons and Emily Clemens for one. She was a freshman when I was a senior. And it's so fun to watch how they've evolved into great leaders and they're doing a phenomenal job and they've worked their tails off to get to this point and they've earned it, they deserve it. And so getting to still be around and watch them and talk to them, it's just they're doing great things and they've done so well throughout their careers. Now your senior year, uh, team won 17 games, most for Coach Gravina at the time, but now they're 20 and six, 10 and three in conference play. And that's just something that hasn't been done in quite frankly 11 years and got a real big game tonight. Oh yeah, they have done something special this season and that comes from the hard work and preparation. It's not a fluke, it doesn't happen overnight. It's been many seasons, it's been the off season and they set themselves up for tonight's game and South Dakota State's a tough opponent but they're here, they put themselves in the situation and tonight's gonna be a battle. That would break the tie. You say that's gonna be a battle. 73-58 in Brookings a uh, little less than a month ago. What do you think changes? Obviously probably gonna have to get, Leonard's gonna have to get off to a good start tonight. Right, and home court advantage is huge. Brookings is a tough place to play. Their fans are phenomenal, but I have a feeling tonight we're gonna have a great rocking gym. We have great fans here, great community support, and it's a game of run. South Dakota State is gonna go on a run, so it's gonna be up to Western to cut that run a little short than normal and go on their own run. I mean, they have the ability to do that. We've talked about kind of the depth of our arsenal and you know, a couple threes from Higginbotham, Bloomer, Emily Clemens at the quick drive. We've got our own opportunities to go on runs. Uh, one other thing uh, that you're 
kind of spearheading as uh, women's empowering. Talk about uh, that group here at Western Illinois. What are the goals and maybe some events coming up? We go by WE, Women Empowering, mm -hmm. and it's just for our female student athletes. We bring them all together, make friends with other female student athletes, not just your sport, and we're here to celebrate being strong women with muscles. You know, we're more than just a student, we're more than just an athlete. We're women, we're preparing for the future, and it's just a great, great group that we have. Sounds like a great cause, Tori, and thanks you for coming, coming on, and I'll see you tonight for that game on the radio. So, all right, go ahead, and we will take a break. And But remember, for the game tonight, got free Dippin' Dots. If there's 500 students, you could, and you're a student, you could win a raffle for $1,000 from Coach Minner and Coach Gravina's pocket. And at halftime, there will be a half-court shot for a 43-inch TV. A lot of promotions, but we'll be right back on Local Sports Focus. We taught him how to hit a baseball, how to hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be and you read stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. My favorite thing about News 3 is you're constantly working with someone. If you're not going to work with someone, then your show's not going to go right. News 3 has really got me ready and prepared for the outside world. Traveling to do a tornado story, or if that even means traveling to Iowa to cover third graders, um, I get to work with some fantastic people. It wouldn't be the show that it was today without the production crew, without our anchors, without our talent. It's really a team effort, and I am I'm beyond blessed to be able to be here. Welcome back to Local Sports Focus. In 1976, a then 16-year-old Kelly Sears started coaching football at the Little League level. Forty years later, he's wrapping up a head coaching career at Macomb High School, where Sears recorded a 121-83 and overall record, including 14 playoff appearances. It's been a successful football journey for Kelly Sears, with coaching stops in Arizona, Iowa, and Southern Illinois. He arrived in Macomb in 1989 as an assistant and took over the head coaching reins in 1996. You know, it's kind of funny. I was never interviewed for the head job. They, the superintendent walked in and said, do you want it? And I said, yep. And he said, okay, that's good enough. School administrators are still grasping bomber football without Coach Sears. But all in all, he's been a great coach for Macomb High. He's been really great for our kids. And uh, I hate to see him uh, retire because uh, uh, I still think he has a lot left in him as a coach. Coach Sears is a rare bird indeed. Uh, because, you know, it's, uh, it's rare for any coach in any sport uh, to stick around for 21 years, right? It's a tough job, and, and uh, you know, when things are good, it's great. When they're not, you know, it's tough being a, a coach at a high school level. Sears realized he missed valuable time with his own kids while coaching. During, during football season, I never made one of these junior high football games and uh, freshman games I didn't go to because I was always coaching. And even with my daughter in softball, you know, she had stuff going on in the spring and I was coaching softball at the time. When Coach Sears sat down with his current players, he wanted to make sure that they knew he was still going to be around. And I've always told any of my players, anybody that's ever played for me, hey, you can call me at any time in the middle of the night. I'll come bail you out of jail. I'll do whatever it takes. And, you know, the same for the guys that's there now. And now I'm a bomber for life. I'm a Macomb homie and I'm here to stay. And, uh, you know, I want the program to succeed. And uh, I'm going out on a good note. As far as the bomber coaching search goes, MHS Athletic Director Dave Bartlett says there's been interest from all over the region and within the f current football staff. 
He hopes to have a clearer idea by the end of March, end of February, and into March. Yeah, that school board meeting in March. You're gonna try to announce it then. Uh, we will. <laughs> All right, live television, folks. In 2010, the Olympic Conference disbanded. The high school athletic conference, con uh, Olympic High School, consists of schools in the Western Illinois area, including Macomb High. Since then, the Bombers have struggled to schedule football games with the current West Central Conference losing member schools. A month ago, an interest letter was sent out to reform the original Olympic Conference. Macomb Superintendent Dr. Patrick Toomey is one of the area superintendents to lead the charge in discussing a reforming of the Olympic Conference. And I said I just thought it was time that perhaps superintendents had that conversation about uh, should we uh, contact all the old members of the Olympic Conference and say uh, how about a conversation uh, about what it would look like if we put the Olympic Conference uh, back together. There's no doubt where Macomb stands on rejoining the conference. Macomb is absolutely interested in uh, reforming the Olympic Conference. Uh, the secret would be, I think, if, uh, if we can uh, at least start out with six schools uh, who would have that same interest, I think we could move forward. At the latest of the two interest meetings on reforming the conference, a 3016 football district in the Western Illinois region was suggested. That would be six divisions consisting of six teams each. Big setup, big thing to tackle but that was what a proposal was made at our meeting on Friday that will no, now go back to the individual conferences for uh, evaluation and see if there's interest to go that way. At this point a complete realigning of the Olympic Conference still depends on football. I mean, we, we are and uh, a couple other schools are like Monmouth and Sherrard but the other schools that would be logical members still have not made that commitment and I think their feeling is to really watch to see how this football proposal goes. The five other schools the Bombers could potentially join with the football arrangement are Monmouth, Roseville, Rockridge, Mercer County, and Sherrard, Mercer County, Sherrard, Orion, Sherrard and Orion. We will continue to update you as more developments come. A look at the Leathernecks and Bombers upcoming schedules and our final break of the show right after this. Classes, friends, teachers, and activities have had a tremendous impact on my time here. Hillary's passion for learning and helping others will lead her down a successful path. Whether I choose graduate school or missionary work, I'll serve to the best of my ability because I am a success story. I am a love and act. Think purple, think success. Think Western Illinois University. I want to eat. children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. I'd have to say it's just the fact that you can get involved right away. You walk in the door and you can learn all the equipment. And I've been able to anchor, I've been able to be a DJ on our student-run radio station here. I've been able to work any of the camera equipment and the audio equipment. The fact that you can get involved right away. Everybody's really friendly. They welcome you right when you walk in the door. And you report the news, but you can also have fun stories and hard news stories and conflicting stories. But yet, you just get so such a real-life experience here at News 3. Here on Local Sports Focus, we want to inform you, our viewers, about the sporting events going on in Macomb High and Western Illinois University. We end our show with a look ahead at next week's sports for the area. We'll start with the M we'll start with MHS as winter sports are wrapping up and the boys basketball team is playing their last home game and it's senior night against Monmouth Roseville High at 7.30 p.m. on Friday. A little bit of a fuller slate for Western Illinois. WIU women's basketball, of course, playing later tonight at 7 p.m. against South Dakota State. Leatherneck country at Western Hall. Men's basketball traveling to North Dakota State for a game this Saturday, the 18th, at 4 p.m. Now baseball is traveling to Starkville, Mississippi, to play in a doubleheader against the 14th-ranked Texas Tech. 
and on that, that's on the 17th and 18th. Then they'll match up against Mississippi on the 18th and 19th at 4 p.m. and 12 p.m. That's against Mississippi State, the Bulldogs. Softball will be playing in the Holiday Inn Hilltopper Classic on the 18th and 19th against Miami, Ohio, Belmont, and Western Kentucky. That's all for us today here at Local Sports Focus. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for News 3 Live at 4. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be on the air again next Wednesday at 9 a.m. Have a great rest of your morning. We're out of here.